Yeah, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And that's a fact uh, that is uh, revealed yet again, and it is revealed year after year in the Oxfam reports. Uh, it's not just a left-wing slogan, it is a fact. So while the cost of living is crucifying and impoverishing uh, tens of millions of people across the world, uh, the world's billionaires and multimillionaires are getting richer by the day, and the two things are directly related. Uh, and that's not just a global picture, but as Oxfam reveal, uh, it is very much the Irish uh, domestic uh, picture. So a 55% increase during the two years of the pandemic in the assets of Ireland's billionaires. A 55% increase. I mean, it's absolutely extraordinary. Uh, bringing their wealth uh, now up to a total of 51 billion, just nine individuals, uh, an increase of 15.5 billion in one year. Meanwhile, 691,000 people in Ireland are suffering from deprivation. And those figures are increasing uh, as we speak. The profit of the energy companies, the profit of the food companies, they specifically refer to uh, pharma and so on, rocketing while ordinary people are impoverished. And they call, as we have done, for modest increases on tax on, the, on Ireland's billionaires uh, and, and multimillionaires. Uh, and they say that a 1.5 uh, percentage tax on the millionaires who have wealth in excess of 4 million euro would generate 4 billion euro a year in extra wealth. Imagine what that would do for housing, for poverty, for deprivation, but this government uh, refuses to even think about it. Minister Good. And I am very pleased to have the opportunity to contribute uh, to this discussion in Oxfam's recent global report on inequality levels. The report does draw attention to important issues around wealth and income inequality, cost of living pressures and how policy in advanced economies can respond to the global challenges. In particular, the report highlights the negative effect which the COVID-19 pandemic has had on equality across the world. However, the range of supports which the government put in place in Ireland was extremely effective in stabilising people's income and protecting those most at risk. And there has been a lot of discussion here this morning about the energy companies making profits. Well, in Ireland, the main company making the profit is the ESB, which uh, the purpose of their profits is to reinvest in energy infrastructure in Ireland. Uh, it doesn't go into any individual's private pocket, any dividends or profits from that source. Uh, the recent CSO survey on income and living conditions showed that without COVID-19 income supports, the at risk of poverty rate in Ireland would have been more than 8% uh, percentages higher. Uh, it fell actually by 1.5% during COVID down to 11.6%, which we uh, all accept is far too high, but it would have been up at 20% without the COVID measures introduced by this government. The report also highlights the importance of progressive taxation measures in tackling income inequality, and Ireland is a very strong performer in this regard as well. I know the discussion here this morning talks about global issues and talks about domestic issues. But the revenue commissioners here in Ireland estimate that in 2022, the top 1.6% of income earners will pay 28% of total income tax and USC charges receipts. Furthermore, over half the total income tax and USC receipts will be paid by 8% uh, of taxpayers in Ireland. Uh, indeed, the, re the redistributive power of our tax system has been repeatedly acknowledged by the ESRI, the OECD and, and the IMF. I note that the Oxfam um, blog on the report highlights the increases in wealth in this country in recent years and it raises the issue of wealth tax. And of course, there already are a number of wealth taxes in place in Ireland, including capital acquisitions tax, capital gains tax and local property tax, and they generate 2.8 billion per annum as it stands. I know some people in this house object uh, to a property tax 
whom I thought parties on the left would have generally supported the local property tax, but quite a number of people in this House oppose that, which is very important in contributing uh, a significant portion of that £2.8 billion. In terms of designing a new tax, the central bank data shows that the main driver of increases in wealth in recent quarters was positive revaluation of housing assets. So generally, people's houses have been increasing uh, from what they were after the financial shock, and that has increased the Bank of Wealth in Ireland, which is made up of uh, houses primarily as a key element of making up the increase in wealth in Ireland. In terms of the cost of living pressures, we're all aware that inflation has peaked across all advanced economies linked to the rebound in global demand and persistent supply disruptions and pandemic-related effects in the war in Ukraine is further exacerbating this situation. And the government is acutely aware of this and the impact of this, especially on low-income families, and that's where we've concentrated all our resources of the two billion increases that the government has dealt with since Budget Day up to uh, the most recent changes in relation to the various increases um, in relation to helping people with poor, poor poverty. And without that, uh, the situation in Ireland would have deteriorated far more dramatically. However, the causes of the current price pressure are not within the control of the Irish government. The government has to balance the appropriate response to the increased cost of living in Ireland with the unprecedented level of global uh, economic uncertainty and macroeconomic risk. Um, but I, I, I am satisfied that the government has been taken reasonable step-by-step -step measures on this issue. And nobody thinks the government can eliminate inflation. All the government can do, uh, and it is taxpayers' money we're using, is to ameliorate the worst effects of the inflation, especially on those who feel it most. Uh, the rich in this country pay more tax because they have vastly more wealth. It's not because it's a particularly progressive system. It's because there's a massive inequality in the distribution of wealth and income. And the two things are related. So this is a complete bogus sort of spin argument from officials to say that that proves we have a progressive tax system. It doesn't at all prove that. Uh, what it proves is uh, the rich have vast accumulations of income and vast accumulations of wealth. And, with the, and, and, and this, I mean, at the very minimum, we should start to gather this information. And it's very telling that we don't, that we don't have a register of wealth and assets uh, to work out the distribution of that wealth, which has gone through the roof in recent years. And ordinary people, the figures on deprivation, which we do keep, show that the levels of deprivation, poverty, energy poverty, and so on, are rising at the moment. But the company's profits are going up, the wealth of the billionaires is going up, and the overall net wealth uh, in the country is going up. Somebody's got the money, and it's not the working people of this country. Thank you. And I also just want to highlight the fact, because this is an international report in relation to Ireland's contribution to overseas development aid, and to this end, we have increased the cash allocation of overseas development aid for the last eight consecutive years, with the contribution this year above €1 billion Euro for the first time ever. So in relation to the global issues, uh, we are making a contribution appropriate or um, relative to our size of the world economy. I do want to say the, there is a research paper available on the ESRI website, which shows that the vast majority of uh, wealth in the form of non-financial assets, with the largest component of households in Ireland uh, derive from the residents are from their farmland. And that's what the ESRI report, and you just asked about that. And uh, um, it's not from our officials here in Ireland. The OECD, and I'm sure everybody has to give equal respect to the OECD's comment, um, said that Ireland has the most progressive system of taxes transfers of any OECD member. And I just want to put that on the record. They're not from the Government of Ireland or the Department of Finance figures, but I do understand the issues that you, you say. And people on approximately um, the 15,000 gross income pay less than 1% of tax uh, effective rate of tax, less than 1%, whereas rightly so, people on 100,000 pay 38.1%, and if you're up at 120,000 for those people, the ta effective tax rate is well over 40%. So that is progressive taxation. The higher your income, the higher your percentage of tax. So it's very important to say that, and uh, we've made strong efforts in relation to those areas. And I do accept, of course, we can do more. I do accept the COVID situation did transform world economies. I do accept it was transfer of wealth as a result of COVID.
COVID. And I do accept that the OECD says that Ireland has the most uh, progressive distributive uh, form of taxation of any of the OECD members. Thank you. Very much.